Hello everybody, my name is Marlo. Today I'm going to show you how to build this super simple nether starter house for Minecraft 1.16. If you are new to my channel and you like the look of that build, please consider subscribing. I've got lots of new 1.16 content coming out, build tutorials as well as let's plays and I think you may really enjoy it. So thank you for doing that. All of the blocks inside of this chest is everything we need for the build inside and out. So we've got some wart blocks here at the top found in the wart forest, some crimson blocks found in the crimson forest, some nether brick which you can either get from a nether fortress or by smelting down some netherrack and crafting it that way, and then the rest is really just some odds and ends and other bits and bobs used in the build. And on the bottom row here are all of your survival related items. All of this stuff will just come in very handy to you as a survival player. As far as location of this build is concerned, do bear in mind it's not entirely blast proof from gas, so maybe don't set up in a soul sand valley, but as long as you're careful, this should be okay from gas balls. So the first thing to do is mark down where you want your front door to be. Now, this base takes up roughly a 9x9 area, so do bear that in mind before you start actually building, but we can just place four blocks down like that using our warp stems, and that right there is where the doorway is going to go. From on there, we can have have two more blocks on top, a horizontal one connecting them like that, and then have two more on each of the pillars with another horizontal one there, and finally one more on top. So that is the front of the house. I've just placed some shroom lights down in the center of the base purely so you guys can see what's going on a little better, so do your best to ignore them. But from now we're going to come around to the right hand side of the build and place down one, two, three, four more warp stems just diagonally from that block there and then we're going to leave a gap of three and do the same again for high and then we can get our strip wart hyphae which is the texture on all six sides that one right there and we can have three along the bottom and then we're just going to need to get some temporary blocks and place them on top of that one and do the same again with more hyphae and then we can just have some regular stems on top. Coming round to the back of the house, we're going to again have one diagonally away from this wall here, one, two, three, four warp stems, and same again with a block in the middle, temporary block on the top of that one, then we're going to have one, two, three, and one more in the centre. And for the final side, we're going to go one, two, three, leave a gap of one, one, two, three, and then same again over here. And then we need two temporary blocks just on those blocks there. And then we're going to have a line of warp stems going all the way across. And that is the four walls of the house all done. On the four corners here where all of the walls meet, we're going to have a nether brick wall with three crimson fences above it going all the way around. So one wall, three fences all the way up to the top level here. Now you can grab the rest of your nether brick blocks and we can start by outlining the roof. So come to the front of the house here or the back, it doesn't really matter, these two are identical but on the front of this top crimson fence here we're going to have two upside down nether brick stairs with two more facing inwards and then two more upside down ones on the back of those. Then we need a full nether brick block with two more stairs above it and an upside down one in the centre. We can then do that around the back. On the right hand side of the build or whichever one where your three wide window space is going to be we want to have a line of nether brick stairs going all the way across from one fence to the other just like that and then if we swing around to the other side here we want to actually grab some temporary blocks for this and we're going to have a nether brick slab at the top part of the crimson fence again and two temporary blocks just inwards one and then we want to come one diagonally from that slab we've just placed we can then get rid of those ones right there and then we just want to bring down down another slab just half level so we've got something like that gonna need to place some more temporary blocks of course to do that so we can do the same on this side too so we have something like this at the moment diagonally and then downwards and then we just want to have a line of three slabs going all the way across just like that so we end up with this shape here on the bottoms of these slabs here, we're then going to place some more crimson fences with a nether brick wall on the bottom, just like we have here, except one block shorter, and we can do the same over on this one too. And now we're going to make some use out of our crimson fence gate. So if we put a line of three down here, you can see that looks pretty cool. And that's because fence gates actually work a little funny with walls. When you place them down, they are lowered by a couple of pixels, as you can see. And I'm not sure why they do that, but it allows you to make some pretty neat wall designs just a small little tip for your building skills 
We can now start work on the roof a little bit more. So we're going to start by placing a stair facing inwards on top of these blocks here with another one upside down just above it to create a nice little offshoot on the top of the roof. And then we can do the same on the other side. And then we're going to bring in some nether brick stairs by one, two, three. And same again over here, one, two, three. And then a full nether brick block in the middle. And on this side, we can start by placing a line of crimson stairs going all the way from one fence to the other, just like that. And then we can fill in this little gap here with some crimson slabs. And then we want to have a full crimson plank on top of the stem blocks here. But we actually want to have these blocks going across be some upside down stairs, which just allows us to have a little bit more room inside. You'll see how that makes sense once we actually start work on the interior. But then we want to go all the way across with some more crimson and stairs. As for the other side round here, we can have two crimson stairs on each side just like that with one in the center. We can then have two strip crimson stems in each of those other spots right there. Two crimson planks on each side and then on the top level here we just want to have some stairs bending round to the side. So start off on top of the strip stem here, another one and then another one here to create a corner and ending up next to the nether brick stair. On this block here we want to have an upside down stair with a full block in that little gap right there. It's now time to place down all of our glass and doors. So we're going to start by having our crimson door around the front here just like that. Inwards a block just to add a little bit of depth and then for my windows I'm using some light grey stained glass panes. You could always use a different block. I just quite like the light grey because I think it blends in quite nicely with the warped blocks here. So that's the front of the house. We can then come around to the right hand side here. Have one up on our little window there in the roof and then three more along here. Round the back we can have a warp stair on the bottom block and a warp stair on the top block and a two high window just like that. In the back garden here we can have an upside down warp stair with our back door again, back a block just like that, warp stair, warp stair and glass pane. Just like that all the windows and doors have been added in. Just a couple more details left to add in before we can move on inside and start work on the interior. So on this side right here with our window on the roof, we can have three warped fence gates going all the way across and open them up just like that to look like some sort of support for the roof there. And then underneath the window, we want to have some soul soil going all the way across and cover that up with some warped trap doors. You could use some nylium here if you wanted to, but you need a silk touch pick to be able to harvest that, hence why we're using the soul soil but then we just want to plant some of the nether blocks on top of here so some of the funguses and that sort of stuff to make a nice little garden just beside the window there. Gonna do the same around this side too with the fence gates so three across the top and open them all up. We can then break these six nether rack blocks and replace them with some soul sand and plant some nether wart on top just so you have a little farm of that if you want to use it for brewing which I think you may need to at least for some fire resistance if you're planning on living in this place but if you don't want to use that you could maybe bring over some eggs from the overworld and make a nice little chicken coop out the back of your house as a little food source. Just beside our doorway here we want to have four warped fences with a line of slabs across to make a small awning and then the final thing to do is to add a chain with a soul fire lantern on the front and the back of the house. So that is the exterior of this small starter house fully complete. We're now ready to move inside and start work on the interior. First thing to do when you walk through the doorway is to replace this block right here with a shroom light and put a pressure plate on top to open and close the door. The next thing to do is to break all of the netherrack and replace it with some of the polished blackstone bricks and if you want to this wasn't included in the materials list but you can also chuck in a little bit of the cracked variety in case you want to add a bit of texture to your floor and make it a little bit more interesting. Once you've got that done, we can then add in our second floor. So start with a warp stair in the corner here with an upside down one off the back of it. A regular one facing sideways this time with another upside down one and then another one on the top just like that. And then we can fill the rest in here with some warp stairs going all the way along just like this. However, do not place one here. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to get up and down without crouching. And it's probably just going to be more annoying than it's worth. 
As for the ceiling, you can see this is what looks like to be a full block from the outside. It's these blocks right here. So we actually just want to curve them round a little bit in the corner so we don't get that little bit poking through. So we're going to have an upside down stair on top of the warped blocks. And then we just want to have two inwards here next to the window. And then at the very top here, three shroom lights and cover them up with some trap doors. Heading downstairs, we want to place a barrel facing upwards in each of the corners just here with a chest on top as a little bit of immediate storage. So maybe you can store some of your important items in here that you use on a regular basis. Just beside it here on the left hand side, we're going to have two furnaces with a brewing stand on top, blast furnace, stone cutter, and then our crafting table can tuck into the little corner there underneath the stairs. Gotta go back upstairs now and fill out the second floor up here. So to begin with, we're gonna have a soul lantern here in this corner. And then on these two blocks right here, we want a double chest with a double chest on top. And then same again, just opposite. So this is more bulk storage if you can't fit all of your items into those four spots just beside the door. So we got a bunch of storage and then just beside it, either side doesn't really matter. We're gonna have our smithing table so you can upgrade your diamond gear into netherite if you happen to be in this house long enough to do that and then the other side can be our respawn anchor so if you die in the nether you will respawn back in the base just remember to actually fill up with glowstone otherwise it's not gonna work and then one final detail which really isn't needed I just think it's pretty cool we can have a warp trap door on that spot right there fold it downwards and we just get a nice little view out of this window and that is the interior of this build all done, which means it is finished as a whole. I really hope you guys did enjoy this starter house, especially if you're choosing to build it in your own 1.16 world. Of course, let me know if that is the type of thing you are doing. I do love to hear that, but thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you did enjoy, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.